Welcome back. So today we are going to start this Sears lantern that's made by Coleman. And let's see if they have a model. Yeah, four, 476 it looks like. 476.72212. And it's dated 12 of 69. So, what I want to do with this is a more of a conservation than a restoration. Um, and for those of you that are not sure what I mean, is basically I don't want to um, do anything to it more than I have to. In other words, stop the rust, um, clean it up, and uh, see how it works. Um, I think the paint underneath all of that dirt and grime and dust is going to look good. Um, the vent, we got some chips on. Absolutely nothing we could do about that. Um, I have no idea what this is. Ooh, that looks like it's coming off with my fingers. So, like I said, we're just going to strip it down and we're going to uh, clean it up. So, I have the awesome vice here that I won from Rob so we're going to be using that so we're going to get this over in the vise alright we're in frame Okay, remember what I said a while back? Hold on. Never tighten this, uh, the nut on here so much that you have to get a wrench to take it off. That could actually do stress fractures in the vent. Not too bad. Lots of rough uh, rust on the frame, so we'll take care of that. Let's get the globe out. And as you can see, the globe does say Coleman on it. All right, so the first thing we got to do is, let me turn this around. Should make sure there's no fuel in it. That's bone dry. And my battery is flashing away on my camera here. Hopefully uh, it don't die on me. But let me see if I can get a little closer. So basically this is just like taking apart a Coleman lantern. But we got to get this one screw out right here first. Let's see. Nice. All right, we'll set that aside. Now the next thing we're gonna wanna do, we back off a little bit. We want to get this burner assembly out, okay? The um, the air tube and the two tubes, the burner tubes, all right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to swap my battery out and we'll hit that. All right. I like to get a vacuum and suck out these old um, uh, mantles because they're very dusty and you don't know if they're older ones that, you know, are slightly radioactive. <laughs>
And that makes short work of it. All right, let me tighten this back up. Oh. Now, I always recommend trying to do this with your hand first to see if it's loose. Wow, look at that. Everything is loose. When I turn this, I see the whole valve turning, which, to be honest with you, isn't cool. All right, let's see how we're going to attack that. What we're going to do is... We're going to get a wrench, big channel lock. Let me back up a little bit. Get a channel lock. We may have to hold this in multiple directions, but let's see. Use a piece of leather to protect it because this is just soft brass. Okay, what happened was, if you look, I have to loosen it to show you, there's a screw right here, I never take that out if I could avoid it, but that actually, this actually turned, okay, so this is going to give me fits, um, yeah, I'm not digging that. We'll put a little bit of uh, WD in here. I don't want to have to put a wrench on here because this tube could bend. Um, even though I, I do have a replacement, if I needed it, I'd like to keep it original. So uh, we'll just let that soak for a couple minutes. I'll bring you back, and we'll uh, make attempt number three. <laughs> All right, so that's been soaking for a few minutes. Let's see. I'd like to put a wrench on this just to kind of hold it. turning let's put this back on here Whoop. should have tightened this up first okay Oh, made a huge mistake right there. Almost. Forgot to take the generator out. All right, we got the generator out. Now we go back to this. Where'd my leather go? Eh. All right. Dang, that fought me tooth and nail, huh? All right, so now I can already see that this is all loose, so I don't even need a wrench on that. So there you have it, let me back up a little bit. So now I got the frame off. Got the tip cleaner assembly off. 
Now we will slide this around. Oops, excuse me. Rob, vice works great. We'll take off this knob. Whoa, flying object. Carefully get off the frame rest, which is in really nice shape. All right, so that's as far as we want to take this down. Look at that nice blue color there, huh, folks? That's looking sharp. Look at that, huh? All right, let's go to the next thing, which is going to be to take out the pump see what that looks like so once you get this little C clip off you should be able to just pop it out oh, look at that that leather's in pretty decent shape very nice and then what I'll do is I'll check uh, to do that right now needs oil so I'll have to I'll have to hydrate this leather um, and then I'll check to make sure that the check valve is good I'm gonna clean it anyway but uh, this is the check valve stem we'll get that out so basically this is stripped down as far as I want to take it um, if I was going to do a full restore I would take this valve out so I'm I'm guessing and for those of you that know more than me that this looks like it's a fount for a 275 um, just made into a Sears so that's basically it for the strip down um, I always have a little bucket a Tupperware little bin where I'll put all the parts in so the next step is going to be a lot of soaking okay so what I'll do first is I'll clean most of the muck and grime out with just uh, some simple green and a brush Get all that nonsense out. And then this whole uh, frame will go right into a big bucket of evapo rust. Um, there's other things you could use. You could use vinegar and salt. You could use citric acid and water. Um, they all work. Uh, I use, depending on the severity, um, this looks bad, but if you look at it, it's very orange. So evaporust may clean this up perfectly. Um, I, I tend to, these days anyway, I go with the least aggressive method first, which is the evaporust. Um, see how it looks. If it doesn't look good, then I could always go to the citric acid. Um, the citric acid works great. The only thing is it's got to be warm or almost hot. And it's not a problem in Florida, <laughs> but uh, yeah, the warmer it is, the best, better reaction that you have. Um, this will get soaked in citric acid because it works great on cleaning brass and it'll get rid of this rust. Um, Evapo rust doesn't work on brass, okay? So it has a, what is it, cleaning action for rust, um, and that's it. And then this whole thing will get soaked in evapo rust also because it doesn't hurt the porcelain. So I got a lot of soaking to do, and uh, when I get that all done, I'll bring you back, and we'll uh, do a little cleaning up on that bad boy. All right, all right. So I have the fount cleaned up. Boy, that cleaned up really, really nice. Got a couple little nicks and stuff, but I'm okay with that. Something odd on the bottom, if you could see right in there, the um and 
right over there and over there the powder coating or whatever they painted this with never made it in there that's the primer and some of it came out over here so I'm going to clean up this rust just with a little sandpaper because it's a little rough um, and I am going to uh, use my paint clarifying compound, which is just like a fine rubbing compound. I'm going to rub this whole thing down. I'm going to touch up these spots here that are going to be bare metal with just an acrylic paint I'll mix up just to kind of, you know, basically stop the rust. Um, you know, it, it's pretty difficult to get an exact, mat, uh, exact match. But when it's sitting up on the shelf, nobody will notice. So um, I'll also just clean up this brass valve. Um, I have to, I'm probably going to put a little bit of navel jelly on it after I cover this whole fount. What I'll do is I'll tape it off. So just in case any navel jelly gets on it, but that'll clean it right up. Um, we'll have that all cleaned up. So when I bring you back, this will be all done. Hopefully uh, the frame and everything comes out good after the soaking. And uh, we'll do some other reassembly, and we'll see how she looks. All right, so check it out, folks. So that came out really nice the um, paint clarifying compound just brought that back to life um, again that's just a fine rubbing compound um, I don't think I tried to find the renew paint clarifying compound and the only way you can get it is in the kit the scratch kit but I did a little research and oh here's the, the case you wanted to know this is what that came out of renew rx but i did a little research and it's basically just a fine rubbing compound so i did touch up some spots obviously on the bottom where all the rust was um, and where that paint was missing and um i used um again acrylic paint and you could see it i did not get a perfect match it was definitely a little tricky as far as trying to get this color. Um, I don't even know what it's called. Now, if I was really like, oh my gosh, I got to match it, I would bring the fount to wherever, auto parts store or whatever, and I would get a color match. But again, I'm not, I wasn't looking to do that. Um, basically, the, the paints on it to stop it from rusting again okay so um all the spots that i sanded were obviously bare metal and i don't want them to rust again now this is going to be on a shelf that's pretty high um, i'm going to see say it's going to be about hmm, at least 12 feet in the air 11 12 feet in the air so there's no one's going to notice that but again obviously if you look close you could see little spots, okay? Again, I'm not freaking out over that. I'm very, very pleased. So um, I put a new gasket inside the filler cap. Um, a lot of this stuff I've done already, so in the interest of saving time um, on the video, because I know they end up being long because I yap a lot. Right there, Bones? <laughs> um, but I've done all this stuff. Um, uh, Rob has done this um, there's a ton of videos out there but if anyone is interested in seeing exactly how I did certain things that I'm going to talk about just let me know and I'll I'll find the video where I did it and I'll tell you what part of the video it's in okay I actually replaced this pump where's the other one I put it away um, when I soaked this pump for some reason these caps right here they have an extremely thin coating of nickel on them i'm gonna guess it's either nickel or zinc 
I'm going to guess nickel because zinc doesn't dissolve as fast as the nickel does. And they turn a very rosy color from the copper or the brass underneath. It's actually brass. Um, and it looked, I didn't like the way it looked, okay? Now, also, the check valve I replaced. Um, the way you test the check valve is you pump it, okay, and then you hold your thumb or your finger right on that hole, okay? And if the pump shoots back out, then your check valve is stuck, okay? So I cleaned it with carb cleaner. Um, I soaked it in a parts uh, cleaner, and it would not loosen up. There's a little ball bearing in there. Again, I could show you that. Um, you know, I could lead you to the video where I did all of that. Again, in the interest of time. Um, I'll probably get it free eventually. I'm going to let it soak for days. And then I'll uh, get a little brass wire and I'll poke it in there and try to loosen the ball bearing. But, again, in the interest of time, um, I replaced this pump. And I replaced the, um, the check valve. Okay, so this one's in nice shape. And it's all period correct. So it's looking great. Let's slide that over. Of course, the globe cleaned up great. I'm very, very happy with the frame. Frame really cleaned up nice. I did not use any wire brushes. Um, that was a soak in a vapo rust and then uh, some very fine steel wool. This is uh, four aught. Okay. The vent came out awesome. Look at that thing, huh? Now, what I did was, again, soak it in the Vapo Rust, and then I used um, cold blue, basically, uh, you know, for firearms, and I blued these spots. And I tried something different this time. I put a little bit of the um, uh, flame-proof paint on it that's supposedly good to 3,000 degrees. I've used it and never had it fail. So I put a little bit of that on it. I just wanted to see how that would work out. But it came out really nice. Now, if you notice here, we got some chips. That's because there's a dent there. So this probably fell. So I'm going to give you a little tip here. Do not try to take dents out of vents, okay? You will chip more of the porcelain. Don't ask me how I know. <laughs> but So basically, um, it's like when I had noises in my cars in the 70s, uh, rattling and whatnot. I just made the radio louder. <laughs> so basically, I'll just put the dent part, the dented part in the back. So I'm very, very pleased with that. Um, what else we got here? The frame rest came out most excellent. And we got the burner tube, the air intake. That came out great. And this was just soaked in citric acid. No polishing, just citric acid, and then again with the fine steel wool. What else? We got the tip cleaner. Now this I don't soak because there's a packing in there. Basically, I'll just uh, put some navel jelly on it just for a couple minutes, and then just run it under water, blow everything out, and then again with the steel wool. Here we have the rest of the tip cleaner assembly. That came out great. Now this can be soaked. What else? Got the generator all cleaned up. Now, this generator was in great shape. It had a new cardboard packing in it and everything. But um, I opted to do my bronze wool packing. Um, again, if you're interested in that, I can find a video that where I showed how to do that. All right, what else we got? The nickel-plated top cap nut couple screws for the knob, a screw for the knob. We got the eccentric block and then the screw to hold in the air tube. So at this point I'm going to reset up the camera and we're going to start some assembly. All right so I have the vise that I won from Robert's Gore. Again if anyone's interested in getting one of these reach out to Robert. We'll put our fount. Now, a couple quick things.
and this holds true especially if you just painted the fount get yourself a this is just from the top of a coffee can um, and this will protect the fount when you're messing around putting the frame rest on all right let's get this on Now, one other thing is make sure you take a picture of the lantern before you disassemble it so you can index it. When I mean index it, which orientation that the frame rest goes, okay? So in this case, the um, this upright is aligned with the valve, okay? And the tip cleaner is right here. So now, you can, you know, if you put it wrong, it's not going to look right. Okay. Now, sometimes when you get these, somebody else already worked on it and they did it wrong. So in that case, you're going to want to just search, do a Google search of the model lantern that you have and, you know, just check a bunch of images. I mean, you know, if nine of them are oriented one way and one is oriented a different way, it's probably the way the nine of them are. <laughs> All right. So we're going to get this on here. put our tip cleaner assembly in here now that's the way it wants to go okay actually a little bit this way now if you remember when I took it apart it was loose and I do not want to crank on that, okay, with my wrench, because there's a chance I'm actually going to move this valve and break the seal, because they use gasola or, or you know, Loctite, whatever they use at the factory, and I really don't want to bust that seal. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this back out. And I see a little bit of thread locker on here, so I'm going to do the same thing. Now, this is a tapered thread, okay? So basically like, um, you know, a gas fitting. So the tighter you make it, the tighter it seals, all right? But since I do not want to crank on this, which I'm going to have to go around probably a whole other turn to where it stopped. Um, so I got to have to get my wrench out with the tool I made to tighten this and go all the way around. So in lieu of that, I am just going to use some Harbor Freight Blue Thread Locker. So this is semi-permanent. You can get this out with a little bit of heat. But what that does is, that's going to tighten up the threads and it's going to seal it. And I don't put a lot. Just a little bit. And I'll feel it. If it feels like it's getting tight, I'm good. If it don't, I'll put a little bit more. So I can feel it snugging up already. That's great. Okay, so what I want to do is get this all lined up. We'll just tighten this nut a little bit so the frame doesn't move. Right about there. Too tight. Slide that out. Make sure everything is aligned. Give that a little hand tight. Then you're going to get your tip cleaner and make sure it's aligned here. I can see we're off a of hair. So that's where that wants to go, and that's where that wants to go. So now we could tighten this nut. Let me get my wrench.
And this wrench, I actually made a couple of these, um, is bent so that it fits in here and fits right on that nut. Okay. Oh, that's a bigger one. Let's get a different size. I made a few of these. This is the one I'm going to have to use. It's just a 9 16 wrench that I ground down, heated, and bent. And don't go crazy cranking that down, okay? Because if you do, it's going to dig into the, um, the found paint. All right, so now let me readjust this a little bit. Next, we're going to get the intake tube assembly. We're going to slip that down here. And if you have everything lined up right, it's going to go right into the hole. Now, let me show you something. Hopefully you can see that. Let me try to get a little closer. See that hole right there? That's got to line up with this hole right here where the screw goes in. So, just carefully keep turning this, tighten it back in the vise. Oh, did you see that? The whole valve moves. So, really what I should have done was, after I put that thread locker in there, is leave it for 24 hours. But again, in the interest of getting the video done, I'm going to need to put... And my hands are probably all going to be in the way, but... So I'm going to hold this tip cleaner assembly, which I'm not done with yet because i got to put the eccentric in. I'm going to hold this. And that's it. Now the holes are lined up. Tip cleaner is still in alignment. Now I can get my little screw here and put it in now if you have it all lined up that screw is going to go in like a piece of cake. If you don't have it lined up, that screw is going to be a bear to get okay, in. That okay. died on me. Let me uh, see if I can get a better angle on this so you can see what I'm doing. All right, so I'm going to get the tip cleaner out. Now, this little at the tip here it's on an offset okay and that needs to go right into this little slot here so the way to do it is make sure the slot is facing forward and then what I like to do is 
I get a little piece of wire, okay, and I'll put it in here. And I'll just give that a little bend, okay, so that I could kind of hold it. Otherwise, it falls down in there. Oh, just like that. <laughs> now I got to take the lantern out and flip it over. Okay. I should make a whole video on what not to do. <laughs> All right, so I just gave it a little bit more of a bend on the end. All right, slip that in there. Yeah, I know my fingers are on the way. It's just little tricky to do this Get, oh man <laughs> this is hilarious bloopers okay There it is. Whoop, let me get the wire out. See that? Okay, so now I want to tighten this all the way. And we're going to get a... I believe that's a... 3 8 Yeah. And we're going to tighten this down. All right, and there you go. It's working great. Now we can put the generator back on. And on the generator, you got that little hook that's going to go into that little hole. So slip this up. I'm sorry, my hands are in the way. I'm on now. I have an excellent joke about trying to find the hole, but I can't say it. <laughs> Come on, get in there. Ah, it's up all the way. Wow. That's just uh, fighting me tooth and nail. Okay, so it's in the hole, and then I like to pull the tip cleaner down. Now it's locked in, and you could drop everything down. Tighten the nut. And this should be a 7 sixteenths. Yeah, I should wait till that Loctite dries. Now, putting that Loctite on there is no guarantee that it's going to seal and not leak. All right. So we got that all together. Let's get it out of the vise, and I'll bring you back All over right. here. Look at that, huh? Man, that's looking pretty. All right, let's put the knob on.
All right, there you go. Let's make sure the valve is totally turned to the right. Righty tighty, lefty loosey. So it's off. Okay. Tip cleaner. That's for cleaning. That's for running. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give it probably about an hour or so just to let that set up a little bit more, the uh, thread locker. Then we'll come back. We'll get some mantles on it and we'll fire this up. All right. So. I let it sit for about an hour. Hopefully that's good. We don't see any fuel leaking out. I don't really like these Insta clips. I mean, they go on fast, but I don't like the wires sticking out. See if that hits the globe. Tight. All right. Let me get a little fuel in here. Try to use one of these uh, funnels if you have one. Um, with the felt in it, it'll get minute amounts of water out if there's water in your fuel. Let me burn in these mantles. My battery light is flashing, of course. All right, I'm going to switch my battery while that's smoking away, and I'll be right back. All right, let's pump her up. Valve is off. Get this over to the other side. All right. Get the tip cleaner a little turn. Now I'm going to listen for air first.
Okay, so what I'm doing is listening for air, and then you'll hear like a little, sometimes you'll hear air and fuel kind of sputter a little bit. I'll give it a couple more pumps. We're going to heat the generator, preheat the generator a little bit. And if you did everything right, it lights. Whoop, oh, I shouldn't have turned that. I should have turned the fuel on. <laughs> you see how that lit up? It's alive! It's alive! All right, let's, whoa, kick in the camera. Let's get the globe on. There you have it. It's a beauty. I love the blue color. Everything's working good. Got a little pulsing going on. Ah, it's humming. Definitely digging it. Definitely digging it. Noise, Captain Noise. So there you have it, folks. The conservation, and again, why I say conservation is because this was not a full-blown restoration, okay? It's pretty much all original now, right? Um couple little touch-ups with paint and stuff like I said but this is was basically just a uh, cleanup job you know so uh, I'm definitely digging the way it came out um, it works perfectly I'm very very happy with it and uh, yeah I hope you enjoyed it so if you find yourself an old lantern out there go give it a shot it's really fun and it's uh, it's rewarding to get her done so uh, I want to thank everyone for coming along. You know I'm going to say it. I'm sending you all much, much love and appreciation, my brothers and sisters. I hope you all are doing well. I hope you all have a wonderful day, and we'll see you on the next one.